So this is my current mechanical keyboard. As you can see, a bit worn. And all of these are the keyboards I have to choose from. So how about we break these keyboards down to see just which one is the best, or at least I like the most. And the only way to get to the bottom of which one is the best to replace this old raggedy missing key keyboard is to test it all out. Build quality, lighting, layout, everything that has to do with the keyboard, especially the switches, we're gonna go over for each of these five and figure out which one is the best. This is the lineup, the Keychron K3 with extra switches, the Vistles V84, the Abca Core AR87, and the Equinix A80 and L80. Now full disclaimer, I did not get paid by any of these keyboards. I don't care if you purchase one or all of these keyboards or none of these keyboards, but they did send me these keyboards for free. And many of them are offering you a discount. I don't know those discounts off the top of my head, but I will have every single one of these keyboards linked in the description below. Using those links, you have a good chance of getting the discount. I'll have those listed in the description as well. But I just wanted to let all of that be known that they gave me these keyboards, but they are not sponsoring the video. Let's start off with the Keychron K3. The first impressions are, I like the packaging. They also sent along various different types of Cherry MX switches. Now don't expect this in your package, I think they just sent this to me along with the keyboard. Also, a little note, this is actually MKBHD's current keyboard that he uses in a studio according to his recent studio tour, so that's kind of cool. The first thing you'll see inside the box is this little instruction card. It just tells you everything you need to know about the keyboard, like it is wireless or you can use a cable, so on and so forth. And right up here, we have some extra Windows keycaps as it's currently set with Mac OS keycaps. We have a USB-A to USB-C braided keyboard cable. And then we have two tools in here. One is to remove the keycap, the other is to remove the key switch. And then the keyboard itself, overall, it looks pretty cool. I love the color scheme. I love the floaty keycaps, or at least that's how it appears to me. Obviously these are hot swappable switches. And then it has a few toggle switches on the back to change a few settings. Overall, I love how compact the layout is. Nice keyboard. The Vistles V84 keyboard. Again, nice packaging, what can I say? However, in this instance, the box shares a little bit more information about the keyboard itself. And inside the box, it includes a wrist pad, which that's kind of cool. And they also included a thank you card. This was probably just for me to see, but in case you wanted to read it, here you go. If not, let's keep it moving. They also included a little instructions card to get you understanding the basics of this keyboard. And underneath the keyboard, there are a few things, starting off with these little grippy deals that I assume you would stick to the bottom of the wrist pad to prevent it from moving around. I don't know, if you know, let me know in the comment section below. We have a user manual, something a little bit more in depth than the instruction card. And then we have a little microfiber cloth that you would get like with a pair of glasses. And then of course we have the Windows keycaps, the USB-A to USB-C not braided cable. That's a slight miss right there. Braided cables are definitely better. The same two tools as before, one to remove the keycaps, one to remove the switches, but then we also have these magnetic kickstands to put on the bottom of the keyboard to prop it up. And then the keyboard itself, overall it's clean. Black and white, what more can you ask for? Compact layout, switch on the back to turn on wireless mode or turn it off, eh, pretty nice. The Abcon Core AR87 CNC full aluminum keyboard, by far the heaviest keyboard I have ever felt. They say aluminum, but I swear it's as heavy as steel. Has some information on the box, but let's just open it up to find out what's inside. Everything comes in a nice case, which is a little ironic considering this is not a keyboard you want to be lugging around. It is seven pounds. They have a little instruction card, a little different than the others, but eh, it tells you a little bit of what you need to know. It comes with the USB-A to USB-C braided cable, the keycap remover tool, and a little cleaning tool inside. Fairly straightforward, almost, if you will, luxurious. I mean, the shine of the aluminum, I really like that. The keys, those are just typical keycaps. And something to note, no extra keycaps, so this one is currently set up for Windows and Windows alone. And just to show you the weight of this thing, just listen. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty heavy. I was kind of worried it was going to break my desk. But taking a look at it, eh seems pretty solid. I mean, it is very solid. It's heavy, but overall looks pretty solid. Moving on to the first of the two Equinix, the A80. Overall, very nice packaging. It has a little bit more color, just like the keyboard has a little bit more color and a little bit of information on the box itself. 
But before we get to the keyboard, what's inside the box? So we start off with the colored braided USB-A to USB-C cable, as well as an adapter for you to be able to use it wirelessly. We have the extra keycap so we can choose between Mac OS keyboard or Windows keyboard. And then we have this little tool. I was unsure of exactly what it was, but after further inspection, it is a cleaning tool. You just pop it out like this and clean in between your keys. And then a double-sided key switch and key cap remover. Underneath the keyboard, we have a little user manual and then we have cool stickers. And the keyboard itself, nice colors, nice layout. It has a very unique look. Overall, I think it's pretty cool. Now the second Equinix, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but the second one is the L80, AKA the Lime 80. And you'll see why I call it the Lime 80 here in a second, but I'm not gonna expect anything different than the A80 in terms of packaging. The outside box is the same. Inside the box again, we have the keycaps, the cleaning brush, the remover tools, and again, a braided USB-C to USB-A color matched cable, whereas this one, instead of having yellow ends, has red ends, which personally, I like red better. And then of course, the receiver in there as well. Now it is slightly different here under the keyboard. We have a slightly bigger user manual. And for a second, I didn't think Think they gave us a sticker but they did the keyboard itself ah, it looks very nice the color scheme with the red the white the gray i just really like that and the reason i called it the lime 80 is because well there's lime right there and on the back it's called the lime 80. overall probably my favorite looking keyboard right next to the keychron k3 that's it for the unboxing. Let's take a deeper look into what these keyboards have to offer. Wireless, wired, switches, are they hot swappable? All of that coming up. Now we know what's in the box. Basically everything had tools, cables, extra keys, whether you wanted for Windows operating system or Mac operating system. But what is unique about each individual keyboard, starting off with the Keychron K3. The first thing you'll notice is the form factor. It is a 75% layout in these keys. These keys just look so clean. They appear to float above the entire keyboard, which I actually really like. The switches themselves are hot swappable, so it really doesn't matter what's in here right now, but I will mention that these are the Cherry Reds, Cherry MX Reds. And this keyboard can either be cabled or wireless via Bluetooth, not a USB connector. And you can have it three different heights. You see we have the middle option right here. You can have it flat or you can have it kickstand all the way up like this, which is my personal favorite. And not to forget to mention that it has an RGB backlight, which is just subtle enough that I do not think looks bad. And I'll tell you exactly what I mean when talking about the Vissels keyboard and these unique features. And the Vissels V84 is the same, 75% layout as the Keychron K3. This is also wireless via Bluetooth or with cable. And as you can see, I removed the delete key so you can see the switches, which is the VS switch, and it is light blue color, so. And when I mention the backlight to this keyboard, it has a very strong backlight, however, I have always thought this about keyboards. When they have this strong backlight that leaks from around the keys, it makes it look cheap to me. That's a big reason why I chose this keyboard altogether is because overall it had what I wanted, but also the backlight. As you can see, it doesn't leak around the keys whatsoever. It only shows in the letter. It does not show anywhere else. And I feel like when it shows, as you can see with the Vissels, Again, it makes it look cheap in my opinion. Now, it doesn't feel cheap. It feels fairly sturdy, fairly strong, not as uh, strong as this, but you know, appropriately strong and heavy. It has very basic keys, as you can see. I'm just gonna throw this right back on there so we can delete stuff. And yeah, that's the Vistles V84. Oh wait, I almost forgot. It does not have any flip out kick stands, but it does have this magnetic deal right here which goes just like that and let me let me let y'all hear that again i love the sound of magnets but that allows you to prop it up which is the position that i prefer so yeah that is the vistles v84 keyboard now on over to the behemoth, the Abconcore AR87 CNC full aluminum, even though it feels like steel. <laughs> and I only mean that by the weight. So you can see that this is a slightly different layout. I believe they call this an 87% layout. 
AR87. There's probably 87 keys on this. It is the same as my 10 keyless keyboard right here, which is just the keyboard without the number pad, basically. This does not have the option to be wireless. This does not have a backlight. It only has a light over here on the side and on the other side. It does not have the option to be propped up. And again, it is the heaviest dang keyboard I have ever felt. This is heavier than laptops to put in perspective. So the keys appear to be Cherry MX Browns. And these are probably my favorite keys to type on regardless of the sound because they're just so responsive. But overall, that's the Abkin Core. Now, quick disclaimer about Abkin Core. I have no idea about the reputability of this, the repu, I think that's, I think that's a word. Let's pretend that's a word. The reputation of this company. When you go to their website and you click on buy now, I'm not gonna show you because it takes you to a site that is fully Chinese, I believe, but then it also has inappropriate advertisements like on the site itself, so. Yeah, that's weird, right? I mean, you can buy it off Amazon and stuff, but it's really weird. But yeah, that, I mean, you know, it kind of looks cool with the aluminum finish and whatnot, but it is heavy as you could imagine. And I mean, sure, it does look nice with the aluminum, and I actually think that that is a pretty cool touch with the RGB light on the side. However, let's take this lightest keyboard and we're going to drop it from about an inch. Okay, sounds like you're dropping a keyboard. What about this one? Oh, that was a little bit more sturdy. What about this one? Okay. Now, I want to drop this one from about an inch, but I'm scared to uh, break my table. Okay, so I just wanted to give y'all a little bit of perspective on that because this is a, about a seven pound keyboard, whereas the others, this one I know is about 3.3 .3 pounds or 1.5 kg. And I believe this is the second heaviest. Yeah, this one's definitely the second heaviest. Maybe this one is, but it is less than half the weight of the <laughs> Abkin Core keyboard right here. So um, if you like heavy keyboards, that's something that you need to take into consideration. Maybe that's the keyboard for you, but for me, I really like to be able to move my keyboards around as I'm typing. Like, honestly, I do this all the time. I mentioned this in a previous video when Grovemade sent me all this stuff like this. They also sent me a wrist rest, but I hated the wrist rest, not because I hated the wrist rest, but because it didn't move around with my keyboard. I don't know, I'm just a weirdo. So let's just move on to the next. Which brings us to the final two, the Equinix, if that is how you pronounce it, keyboards, both of which are the 75% layout, the same as the uh, first two that we discussed. Same exact layout, however, in a slightly bigger form factor, at least in terms of thickness, as you can see. And the first thing off the bat, besides the layout, you will notice that these have really cool color schemes. I, let me just focus on the A80 for right now, that is this one. Really cool color schemes. It does have kickstands in the back, three different levels. You have a flat, which is already angled a little bit. You have a medium, and then you have the biggest kickstand that there is. It is, in fact, wireless. As you can see by the switch on the bottom, you can either choose the wireless connectivity or the cable. Oh, and speaking of the cable, I know you already saw this, but it is color matched. That's pretty cool. It has an RGB backlight that, while it does kind of leak, I mean, that is what it, the intended feature is, but I just call it leaking because that's what it looks like. It is a little bit more bearable than the Vistles, in my personal opinion. The keycaps themselves are just like every other keycap, except again, they have the color coded. They're not like these little floaty keycaps that you see right here. And the switches appear to be the Cherry MX Reds. Again, all of these keyboards are hot swappable, but that is the Equinix A80. Now let's move on to its brother, the Equinix L80, which this one, we actually know what the L stands for, unlike the A, and that is Lime. I don't know why it stands for Lime, but as you can see right there, it stands for Lime. Everything about this is going to be the same as the other. You have the kickstands, you have the really cool color, you have the color match cable. As you can see, the yellow goes to the A80 and the red goes to the L80. You do have the option for it to connect wirelessly or via cable, but this one, remember, hot swappable, but currently installed with the MX Cherry pinks. Hey. All right, so I don't know if I hit everything, got a little bit distracted, but that's the Lime 
80. This is by far my favorite color scheme. I do say by far, I really do like this color and kind of the look of this, but this is my favorite. For sure, because that's my color. White with red accents and the dark, whether it's black or dark grays, that's what this is, perfect. Now I'm in the computer because I want to take a look at the website and the different options for these different keyboards, starting with the Keychron K3 Ultra Slim Wireless Mechanical Key Keyboard version. <gasps> Two. So starting off, this is the least expensive keyboard coming in at $74 with the version of a white backlight or an RGB backlight, which is kind of interesting because I only assumed based on everything that I know about this keyboard here that keyboards typically came with software where you could change the colors, but eh, maybe not. You have two different switch type options, the low profile Gateron Mechanical or the low profile Keychron Optical Hot Swappable, and you have red, blue, and brown switch options. For the Vistles V84 keyboard, you have pre-installed switches. It's either the VS2 switch, Gateron Red switch, blue or brown, and you can either have white or black keycaps as you can see right here. Just depends on what option fits with the others. Which version you get depends on the price, but remember many of these companies provided y'all discounts that'll be linked in the description in case you are interested in any of these keyboards. Check that out. Now moving on to the Abkin Core. I already discussed how the website is a little bit weird, so I don't know the reputability, if that's still a word, of this company itself, but it is $170, give or take, with the option of blacks, blues, browns, reds, and silent reds, which of course are Cherry MX. I just really think they tried really hard to make this like a like a luxury keyboard with the weight, with the aluminum, with the lighting on the side, and then with gold-plated Type-C USB. Like, who cares? It's You're never gonna see that anyway. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm being a little bit biased, probably because of the website, it kind of gave me a little sour taste in my mouth, but let's move on. Equinix A80, you have a non-backlit option or an RGB LED option, which is what I have. You have cherry brown, red, blue, pink, silver, or Gatoron brown, red, blue. And for the Equinix L80, it has all the same options. And the price for the Equinix A80 is $169. Nice, and this is before any discount that they may have included. Now the Equinix L80, everything is the same. It's basically the same keyboard with a few minor cosmetic differences. The layout is the same. This is a little bit more tilted as you can see, but the price is the same, the options are the same, the colors are different. That's really all I wanted to show you regarding the website. And now having in mind all of these different options in terms of switches for these keyboards, we are going to be doing a typing test. I don't think this will have any sway over my decision considering all of these are hot swappable and I can put whatever keys in there that I want, but the overall layout, the feels of the key caps, especially with those floating keys on the Keychron, I just kind of want to see how that part feels, not the switches. And, you know, typing tests are kind of fun. Now, after all of that, which keyboard is the best keyboard for me in replacing my current keyboard that I've been using for I don't know how many years and has multiple broken off keys? Well, it's a little bit like Goldilocks. I'm not sure I like the floating switches on this one. I don't really like the backlight on this one. The one here is just way too heavy. I mean, seven pound keyboard, what even is that? The colors are a little off on this one while I like it. It doesn't really match what I have going on over here. And this one is just a couple millimeters too tall. But I've made my decision. And while I really like this one, I'm going to be using this one probably from time to time. It will not be my main keyboard as the Equinix L80, AKA Lime 80, will be my main keyboard for all the reasons I listed. It's wired or wireless. It has the kickstands like I like. It has multiple different levels. The color scheme overall is just perfect. Chef's kiss. And the switches are hot swappable and I have all of these different switches here that I can just 
pop into there if I don't like these. The only changes I would make to this, and maybe the Equinix folks have a keyboard like this. I haven't done my research. This is what they sent me. The only thing I would change to make it a perfect for me keyboard is if we could squish the layout to be more like the Keychron K3 and remove this gap between the function keys and the rest of the keyboard. And then maybe, maybe, after that, take like a millimeter or two off the height of this, but then again, that's really not too big of a deal, then that would probably be the perfect keyboard for me. So I hope you gained some value out of this. Maybe you just like to watch keyboards or maybe you're in the market for a keyboard. Remember, all of these will be linked down below, some with discounts, some maybe with out discounts. I would recommend maybe staying away from the African Core based on some of those weird vibes I got from the website and like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell if you're already subscribed, and I'll see y'all next week.